here. I mean, Eugene's right. I mean, both King and Omar have incentives actually to fight. They, they have incentives to fight. One has a way longer track record than the other. I'm not okay. defending anybody's actions. This is but, true. But the long track record compared with a couple dumb and offensive things uh, needs to be weighed. I think the thing that we really need to start figuring out is how to mete out justice. So you give people some choice between the complete denial and fighting or, you know, pariah and fighting so that we haven't figured out how to deal, for example, with differences between Al Franken and Harvey Weinstein. Uh, we haven't figured out how to deal with differences between very various Virginia politicians and who did worse things than others. We only have the death penalty in right. politics. No, and and, we, the, and we need to figure out a way for both to sort of appropriately sanction people, but not to, um, you know, kick them completely out of uh, public life, if unless they've done something that warrants them being out of public life, and how they, how people in our own business and elsewhere, after we do bad things, manage to get back in. After you've served a sentence, you get to go back to society. Maybe your voting rights are restored. Right. How do we? But we don't think about we don't politicians have that in politicians. that way. And it seems like we do need this in some form. Omar has a track record. She had a track record in Minneapolis. Many Jewish leaders were concerned about her statements. That's, then. that's a fair point. And uh, this has become a serial offense for her, mm -hmm. right? She had that tweet about Israel hypnotizing right. the world. Look, it's what and it's not just her. It's, it's not just her. It's also it, Rashida yeah. Tlaib. It's also Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, who praised Jeremy Corbyn, who right. is friendly to Hezbollah. This is a problem for the Democratic Party. You talk about consequences. The political consequences of the Democratic Party being associated with political anti-Semitism are huge. And Eugene's absolutely right. There's a battle that is just beginning within the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And you look at what Mark Melman is doing. They have to fight this. And the fact that it's being imported is very disturbing uh, to, to members of the Jewish community. I, there's no doubt. But you took us off track here a minute. And I, and how I did of, I take you no, off? No, no, no. I'm just asking on the larger I mean, question Ruth of... Ruth is talking no, no, about no. how to distribute justice, which I think is a no, fair No, no, no. That's what I mean. I, it began with Elon Omar. No, I understand. But it also... This issue of anti-Semitism, sadly, is surfacing on the fringe left and the fringe right. So this is it's a... It's on the fringe it, right. It, it, it is... It is now being... There's no doubt. ...imported through socialist politics, ah. which I think is an interesting development, through socialist politics into the Democratic Party. Nancy Pelosi had a horrible week. She has spent the whole week I've... cleaning up after Elon Omar. No, is that no how doubt. she's going to spend her Congress? No, no, no. And I'm saying this, what is, I'm trying to talk about the larger, what are we supposed to do when you have a political, um, whatever you want to call it, uh, span that goes from Omar to King, sure. which eventually, should of course... should vote them out. And right. Republicans the question under McCarthy is, what do the right you steps do? with King, and he should be primaried, and he should be voted out, and the Democrats now need to take similar steps with Omar. And, and that's... She's going to say this again. It's, she's going to say this again. Well, and that this is a question is on her. This strike.